In this video, we're going to look at square numbers and cube numbers. Let's start off with square numbers. I'm going to take the number 1 and I'm going to multiply it by itself. If we do 1 times 1, we end up with the number 1. 1 is a square number. If we take the same number and multiply them by themselves, we get a square number. So we can say 1 times 1 is 1, or we could say that 1 squared is 1. The square of 1 is 1. Let's now take the number 2. If we take the number 2, 2 multiplied by 2, so we have the same number, that will give us 4. We can say that 4 is a square number. So the square of 2 gives us 4. If we did this for 3, we could do 3 multiplied by 3, and the result is a square number. So we can say that 9 is a square number. We can write 3 squared is equal to 9. We could keep going with this. 4 squared, or 4 times by 4, is going to give us 16. We could have 5 times by 5, 25. So 16 is a square number, 25 is a square number, 36 will be a square number, as it's 6 times by 6. 49 is 7 times 7, then we'll have 64, we will have 81, we'll have 100, we'll have 121, and 144. This is 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, 10 squared, 11 squared, and 12 squared. If you want a visual representation, if I just go ahead and draw a square, so here's a square, and I put on some side lengths now, and I say that this one is going to be 4 metres, and this one is going to be 4 metres, we can say that the area is going to be 16 metres squared. The square of 4 is 16. So if you want to see it as an area, you can do. So they're square numbers. The same number multiplied by itself gives us a square number. Let's now look at cube numbers. If I start with 1, 1 times by 1 times by 1 is going to give me 1. We can say 1 cubed or 1 to the power of 3 is 1. If we take 2 and we cube it, we will have 2 times by 2 times by 2. A common error is when students say that this is 6. 2 times by 2 is 4, times by 2 is 8. So we can say 2 cubed, or 2 to the power of 3, is going to give me 8. If we think about the next one, we will have 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3. We know that gives us 9, so this is going to give us 27. 1 is a cube number. 8 is a cube number, 27 is a cube number. So just writing this on now, 3 cubed is 27. In a later video, we will look at powers. This is the number we're multiplying, and this is how many of them we need. So we can see we want the number 3, and we need 3 of them. We want the number 1, and we want 3 of them. We want the number 1, and we want 2 of them. We have the number 2, we want 2 of them. We have the number 3, we want 2 of them. So, if, for example, if I did 2 to the power of 4, I'd have 2 times by 2 times by 2 times by 2. So, let's do a few more cube numbers. This is 3 cubed. 4 cubed is 64. 5 cubed is 5 times by 5 times by 5, which is 125. 6 cubed is 216. If we take 7 cubed, we're going to get 343. If we take 8 cubed, we'll get 512, and so on and so forth. All of these are cube numbers. Again, if you want to see this now, if we just sketch up a quick cube, and we wanted to find the volume of this cube, let's say now I had a cube, and we had on here the side lengths now of 4. So if I put 4, 4, and 4, we know that this is going to be now the area of this cross-section multiplied by the length. So we could say 4 cubed is equal to 4 times by 4 times by 4, which is going to give me 64. So if this was centimetres, it would be centimetres cubed. This is a cube number. Let's now work backwards. What we're going to do is find the square root. 
So the sign or the symbol that I use is the square root and I'm going to find the square root of one. Technically it's plus or minus one. If we think about this now, one times by one is one. We can also say that minus one times by minus one is one. So when we say the square root of a number, we have a plus or minus answer. Often on foundation papers, students are expected just to give it as one. Let's look at this one right here. We can say that the square root of four is going to give us plus or minus two. If we have two and square it, we end up with four. Therefore, the square root gives us two. This is simply saying which two numbers that are the same multiply to give four. Which two numbers that are the same multiply to give nine? Well, it's plus or minus three. Which two numbers multiply to give 16 that are the same? Four times by four. So these now are the square roots. If we look at our cube numbers, we can say now that the inverse or the opposite is going to be cube rooting. And this is the notation we use. So the cube root of one is going to be one. We don't have a plus or minus answer as if we had minus one times by minus one times by minus one. This would give us positive one. Then we'd multiply it by minus one, which would give us minus one. So we can say that the cube root of minus one is going to give us minus one. The cube root of eight is going to give us two. Two cubed is eight. The cube root of eight is two. The cube root of 27 is going to give me three. The cube root of 64 is four. The cube root of 125 is five and so on and so forth. So let's look at a question that you might be asked in the exam. So what we might be asked to do is estimate. So let's do an estimate for, so an estimate for now, the square root of 92. So let's look at what we know. We know that if I take nine squared, that's going to give me 81. So I can say from this and just write in therefore, I can say that the square root, and we'll, we'll have a positive, we'll do a positive estimate. This is going to be now the square root of 81, so that is going to give me 9. If I think about 10 squared, that's going to give me 100. Therefore, the square root of 100 is going to give me 10. We can see now that 92 is going to be somewhere between 81 and 100, so we could say that this is going to be approximately equal. It looks about halfway, not massively over. We could say that this is going to be, let's say, 9.6. So just after halfway. So we've used a bit of logic and we said it's approximately 9.6. If we wanted to get an actual value, let's look at this. So this is the square root now of 92. And that's going to give us now on here 9.59, which is just under 9.6. It, of course, would round to 9.6 to one decimal place. So that's a brief introduction to square and cube numbers.